Center Sunday service. Right now it's our meditation service, our stillness meditation. It's 10 a.m. on the Pacific Coast, and of course, every Sunday we begin with our stillness meditation, which means if you're tuning in right now, you want to find a place to get comfortable. Our regular service with our music and our message begins in about a half an hour at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. And so for our meditation service, I'm going to invite you to go ahead, find a place to get comfortable. And um, you might need to close the door, you might need to draw the blinds, you might want to even light a candle, whatever it is that makes you feel good and comfortable. Just getting situated and just remembering that all meditation, whether it's moving meditation, mantra meditation, whether it's guided meditation or an activation meditation, all meditation is about communion with God with your soul. That's our intention. Our intention is to commune without words, without thoughts, to the wisdom, the providence, the beauty, the grace of the soul of God. And so a stillness meditation, I will be centering this, meaning we're going to slowly let go of thinking and doing and thoughts We'll stay in the stillness for a while, exercising the muscle of no thought. And then we'll come out in a wave of prayer. So I'm going to invite you to find a comfortable place to sit. And if you have a regular way that you do it, I'm going to invite you to just every once in a while try to shift something. Maybe sit in a different position. The intention is always to have the channels and meridians of your physical, emotional, and mental bodies wide open. So as you find that comfortable place to sit with your back straight up, and unless you're sitting lotus or Indian style, perhaps you have your feet firmly on the ground, which helps ground you. And if you like, you can put your hands, palms up on your lap, or maybe you want to hold heart mudra, middle finger and thumb, or you might want to do meditation mudra is index finger and thumb. I invite you to just try different things. With all that being said, and with you getting comfortable, we are ready to begin. The rest will be self-explanatory. And just as a reminder, if for any reason you ever choose to do it as an open-eyed meditation, you're more than welcome to. But if you do, let your eyes stay focused on one singular object without moving. If your eyes wander, your mind will wander. Otherwise, I'm going to invite you to join me and probably about 98% of the rest of us and close the outer eyes as we open the inner. We're ready. over us and to rise up from within us. Knowing we have no place to go, we have nothing to do except completely surrender into the deepest states of relaxation and rejuvenation. We take a moment. We take a moment as we prepare ourselves and we deliberately relinquish any tension or stress, any concerns or strife from any moment of any 
dimension, of any incarnation, of any day. We don't need to know how or why. We call this unburdening ourselves, cleansing, purifying. And so I invite you to imagine the exhalation, the vehicle of release. Exhaling any concerns, all to do what was. Inhaling, using the inhalation of the vehicle to fan the flame of the internal, eternal spark. We take a moment and we exhale and let go of all efforting and trying. We let go of figuring and analyzing. And we let go of time. I invite you to join me as we let go of the past. And any energetic connections to it. I let go of the future. And any energetic projections to it. And to let go of the present and any tethers or ties to it. As we deliberately open, we open our hearts, our bodies, our minds, our souls even more to the infinite eternal grace, the beauty, the light, and the love of God. Beginning to feel the energy of the soul as it fills and thrills the entire physical body. Allowing the light of homeostatic, soothing calm to nourish and flourish, soothe and soften, while at the same time strengthening every morsel and muscle of your being. Imagine. Imagine you can see yourself standing, a silhouette of your body. And every cell illuminating like golden glitter shimmering and shining throughout your body. From your toes and heels all the way up to your crown. Allow your physical body to illuminate with the contagion of peace and relaxation, rejuvenation, and calm. And the light, like a light bulb with a dimmer switch that begins to shine more brightly as we turn it up, that energy begins to flow out into your emotional body, soothing, softening, recalibrating, and returning our emotional body back to its natural, neutral state of vitality. As you feel compassion and divine strength flood the emotional body, you begin to see and sense waves of clarity flowing through the mental body. You can feel the soft nuances of angelic light. And as thoughts and words evaporate, as clarity gives way to providence, the divine illumination the wordless wisdom of your soul. We feel the energy moving, rippling and rolling into the bliss body. And as that energy floods the bliss body, as we feel ourselves so fully immersed 
we feel ourselves woven into the fabric of nirvana of peace of God's light feeling as though we've entered the very heart of God. And it is here that we allow ourselves to commune with the energy of the soul, to witness and observe and should at any moment your mind wander. I invite you to bring your awareness back to your heart and feel your connection to your soul as we go even deeper and rise even higher in revelation and illumination. And it is here that we allow ourselves to rest, relax, and be still in God.
invite you to once again bring your awareness to your heart center. Deliberately choosing to feel your connection between your heart and soul. An energy that rises from your heart up through your crown and makes its way to your soul star. Creating a coherence, cohesion. Feel the energy of your soul as a divine emanation of God. I invite you to feel that energy rise even higher and feel your heart connected to the very heart of the divine. We take a moment as we come back into a lucid state of divine awareness and we remember that this connection is eternal, that the omnipresence, the omnipotence, and the omniamorous love of God is everywhere. There is no space, no place we can go to avoid the brilliance, the bliss, the beauty, the light, and the love of the universal presence, that which we call God, or the universe, or the creator, the great one, Adonai, Jehovah, Allah, Yahweh, by whatever name. That vibration of bliss and intelligence that governs the universe, that is beating our hearts and breathing our breath, we align with that right now even more. We bring our consciousness home. We return home and we know in God all things are made fresh and new. We return home and we anchor the eternal into our human experience, remembering that each and every one of us, born from the light, the heart, the mind of God, that the entirety of the kingdom of heaven is right where we are, for heaven is God consciousness. And heaven on earth is our anchoring of God consciousness, soul consciousness. And remembering as, as a divine emanation of the Most High, the soul the divine spark of light at the very core of our beingness that has never been hurt or harmed, that knows nothing of struggle, lack, strife, limitation. It only knows pure brilliance, and so we say yes to grounding that in our bones, our cells, through our feet. We say yes to remembering, the great remembering, of who we truly are beyond our name, race, age, religion, gender, stature, tape, titles, labels, beyond any of that. And yet, when we allow the radiance of our divine nature to shine through those things, we begin to experience the dance, the beauty, the energy of bliss through us as this is inevitable. It is inevitable that you will experience 24-7 bliss in your bones. The human evolution is to rise into a greater and grander vision and version of this. And so we choose to use our higher consciousness, activating and expanding, rejuvenating and regenerating, recoagulating and returning home right that in our bones, in our bodies, in our emotions, in our minds, that we may be so purified, so cleansed, so illuminated in that holy light. We carry it with us everywhere we go. We might as well use it. And so I'm grateful to know that inherent in each and every one of us is that blissful nature. Inherent in that blissful nature is our ability to give thanks and bless everything. I give thanks for our time together in communion with spirit. I give thanks knowing something wonderful is taking place, has taken place, and will continue to take place. As we say yes to grabbing the golden ring and allowing ourselves to sing the holy song, to sing the praises, to allow ourselves to be so enthusiated by that presence that we only give and receive, receive and give, circulate brilliance on a regular
regular basis. I'm grateful to know that each and every one of us has everything we need to thrive. And how good it is to know, to be still, to sit, to relax, to invite, evoke, and allow, to commune with the divine is all that is necessary, to commune with the true nature of our own beingness. And we allow that to expand. The omnipotence, the omnipresence, the omniamorous nature of God is right where we are. We are omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniactive. We are omniamorous, and we are connected to the omniscience that governs the world, that governs all life. We say yes to a greater and grander vision and version of our lives than ever before. More wellness, more prosperity, more joy, more spaciousness, more freedom, more bliss, more grace, more beauty than ever before. And so I invite you to feel that energy pulsing down pulsing down through your crown, through your heart, through your legs, through your feet, all the way, reminding yourself where your earth star is, at the bottom of your energy field, your 10th chakra, grounding all of this so that we may experience it in the human dimension. We ground it all, feeling that energy like a starburst in the bottom of your energy field, grounding, rooting, claiming, agreeing in divine receptivity to let it all be so by saying, and so I let it be, and so it is. Amen. Mm, so welcome back. It's always good after meditation to marinate for a couple moments. Marinate in the energy we're preparing for our service that's going to begin in a few minutes. So I'm going to invite you, if you need to use the restroom, now would be the time. In just a few minutes, we're going to start our service. We're so grateful to have the magnificent Bashira here with Jesse and Brian. Just going to rock your world with the grace that comes through her angelic voice. We're getting ready in just a few moments, so we'll see you. Good morning and welcome, you amazing, beautiful Soul Center family. I am so excited and happy to be with you this Sunday morning and to welcome all of you beautiful emanations of God. Um, and I want to thank you all for joining us from your comfy, cozy homes on this kind of gloomy Sunday morning. I'm glad you're all tucked away. I do have a couple of announcements and one really, really special one. 
Um, next Sunday at 1 o'clock, we are going to graduate our very first class of Soul Center Prayer Chaplains, our very special Soul Center Prayer Chaplaincy Program. Um, has completed its first round. We still have a couple more people to come through. But these gorgeous, gorgeous souls have fulfilled all of these classes and the hours of service. We're so proud of them. The information will be in our newsletter, of course, and on our website. It'll be a Zoom class. So if you want to come and help support and honor all of our beautiful prayer chaplains, please join us next Sunday, 1 p.m. We are really excited. And proud. And um, also, uh, we are extending the registration for the um, for Karen Mills Alston's Ten Principles for a Life Worth Living class by one week, mainly because a couple of us, and I happened to have been one of them, were unable to make the first class. So um, we're following up on the recording, and then we're coming together. So if you didn't register and you kind of wish you had. Please, if all that info is still live on our website, so please um, join us this next Wednesday night. I hear the class was powerful, and I'm looking forward to um, jumping in to that material. Um, our soul circles have been interestingly powerful, too. Uh, we have people joining um, all the time. So if you're, if you're missing that connection, which we hear all the time, <laughs> um, this is how you get it. Come join our soul circles. They're beautiful, like-minded people, supported, supportive, and we really encourage you to participate. Um, tai Chi in the park on Saturdays is suspended until the weather improves, <laughs> which will probably be next spring. So just wanted to make sure you guys all knew that. And uh, always my reminder of Reverend Keith's beautiful, amazing daily affirmative prayer at 9.30 in the mornings. I love it, and um, I really encourage any of you to jump on that call. It really makes for a beautiful day. And always our Tuesday nights with Akili Beckwith for our Course in Miracles class is such a beautiful, beautiful uh, coming together and uh, invite you to find out about any of this on our newsletter and on our website. Sign up for the newsletter if you're not getting it. And it is my honor um, to invite Florence up uh, to do our reading and affirmation. But before I do that, I just wanted to mention that she had just finished Reverend Keith's beautiful advanced energy healing class last weekend at Sedona. And she gave me a beautiful energy healing session yesterday and so I am so honored and pleased to have experienced it and really thrilled about what's happening in that class as well so you'll be hearing more and more about that please come on up Florence good morning Soul Center my name is Florence Ye and I'm deeply, deeply grateful, honored, and so blessed to be here with you beautiful beings of light today from your homes in the archives. Our reading this morning is from Agape's Daily Inspiration by Inner Visions, entitled Love is in the Air by Greg Johnson. Love is in the air everywhere we look. All we have to do is recognize this love everywhere present, anchor love each morning, taking time to pause and sense God's love in the very air we breathe. Just pause to recognize God's love. The world can be such a busy place, which may seemingly distract us from seeing, sensing, and knowing that God's love prevails through all time and space. The world is hustling and bustling. People are moving and shaking. Minds are reeling and dealing. Yet in the depth of all life is a love so strong, so subtle, so still, so silent, so significant, and so special. Love is underneath it all. See God's love in the air and everywhere. Spend time in nature and feel the trees breathing with God's love. Connect with the sky, the stars, and the clouds to float in the presence of divine love. Be elevated and levitate with the power of God's love coursing through all life. Know that God's love is racing through each of us right here and now. We must stop and smell the love. 
we must pause and feel the love. This is why our spiritual practice of prayer and meditation is a must. So we consciously breathe in the breath of love in every breath. Be still and know that love is. Believe in love. Thank you. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you, Florence. What an honor and a pleasure to have her for her first reading this Sunday. Good morning, Soul Center. It's time for our prayer, our prayer of evocation, where we evoke the presence of God. So I'm going to invite you to join me as we turn within. We turn into the prayer field, knowing that the prayer field is not part of a practice. It is until it's a way of life. Prayer is life. It is the portal from the finite to the infinite, from time and space to the eternal. So we take this moment and we allow ourselves to tune in, to turn within. We open our hearts, our bodies, our minds, our souls into a field of gratitude, knowing something wonderful is only and always radiating and broadcasting itself throughout all dimensions, throughout the entire universe. The omniactive, omnipresence, omniamorous light of God is shining itself to and through and as everyone. And it asks for your yes. It asks for you to grab it and say yes to the great remembering of knowing who you are. That each of us is stated in all scripture around the world in one way or another is born from the very heart, the very light, the very grace and beauty of a dynamic presence that is a God. This is who you truly are. This is who we truly are. And so we say yes to the great remembering of knowing who and whose we are. We say yes to knowing this. the omniscient wisdom and the omnipresence of God shows up to, through, and as us. We are that. We open up to a multi-dimensional experience of the singular knowingness that as divine ambassadors, advocates, harbingers, and messengers of the light, that it is our job to commune with the soul for your soul, which has never been hurt or harmed in any way, shape, or form. That soulful illumination, we are saying yes to rising into a greater and grander vision and version of our lives than ever before. That is the entirety of a life's purpose, to rise into your magnificence, to experience heaven on earth. And so we say yes, a mighty yes, we say yes to only and always growing and expanding, healing, rejuvenating in benevolent and beautiful ways, for this is the nature of life. And we use free will and free choice to choose a right, to choose from truth, to choose from love, to choose from joy, to choose from goodness. We choose this right now, and we know that as we assimilate into our divine nature, as the ego, as the personality, melds and molds itself into the light of your divine nature, you will find that all you do is bliss out, bless out. You bless out loud. You bless everything and everyone all the time. And so I'm grateful to bless this service, to know that something wonderful is broadcasting itself. God is broadcasting itself via the Internet, via the omni-active expression of truth. And so we say yes to this. Something wonderful is seeking to take place. And as we sit and relax and then rejoice, we allow that effulgent life to lift us to higher heights, to take us to deeper depths of brilliance than ever before. We bless everything and everyone, knowing that is all that God does. Blessings and blessings everywhere. So we allow ourselves to not only bless everyone with wellness and prosperity and joy and peace and love and goodness, we are divinely receptive to that. Should there be any resistance in our bones, our cells, our tissues, emotions, or mind, we relinquish that this day as we move into the blissing, blessing field of ever-expanding good. I'm truly grateful as we, we bathe and bask and marinate in this light. We become the ones that wear the garment and we allow ourselves to let people touch the hem of our garment. This is not an egoic or boastful expression. This means that the law of radiance has taken place within us and we bless everything and everyone. 
We let it be good. We let it be so. So I bless you right where you are. God is, love is, peace is, your family members, your friends. We bless it all. We bless our beloved nation. We bless our beloved world. We let it be good. We seek it so. We find it so. We allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. So beautiful. Now we'll do our coffee affirmation as a call and response. I'll speak a line and then we'll repeat it all back together. God's will for my life releases me and sets me free. God's will for my life releases me and sets me free. I am a grounding point for miraculous energy to express. I am a grounding point for miraculous energy to express. My life is an adventure in spiritual growth and unfoldment. My life is an adventure in spiritual growth and unfoldment. I am filled to overflowing with the good of God. I am filled to overflowing with the good of God. High thoughts of health and beauty manifest as my body temple. High thoughts of health and beauty manifest as my body temple. Gratitude and appreciation light my path and show the way. Gratitude and appreciation light my path and show the way. And so it is. Amen. And so it is. Amen. along with Jesse on guitar, Jesse Godoy, who we love dearly, dearly, and Brian Sherrick on keys. My goodness, we're so blessed. And here they come. Come on, Bashira. <laughs>
living for my dreams to become reality. But I will walk a thousand miles, a thousand miles to answer the call of what's burning inside of me, of what's burning. So don't, don't count me out. I may be tired, but not lost. And my beat may be broken, but I will Sunday best. 
Um, you notice I haven't taken any time off from this. I'm not, maybe I'll do my pajamas next week. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but anyway, welcome. If you're joining us for the first time, Soul Center is part of, we are an affiliate of the Agape International Spiritual Center. What does that mean? We're part of the New Thought Ageless Wisdom Teachings, which means that there is a golden thread that unites all life, that has been spoke about in all religious, in the tenets, but it is when you move up into the mystical nature of the spiritual teachings in any given religion, because it is there, whether it's Islam or Judaism or Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism or Shamanism, and there is the golden thread that will take you high should you grasp it, should you say yes, should you say I'm going to spread my wings and fly, should you say yes to that, it will lift you. You've got to grab that golden thread. Now, the paradox here is that the golden thread is woven through you. you. You can't not be part of it. You are woven into the very fabric of God Almighty. As it says in Scripture, we are born in the image and likeness of the divine. What does that mean? That is an enormous statement because most of us think we're born in the image of little old me and a little old body with a little old personality with a little old name and a race and a religion and a gender. And we are so much more than that. Now those things are brilliant and beautiful. It would be as though you've been cast in a movie or cast in a play and you've been given this role and you're putting on your costume and you come on stage and you get to play the part. But who you truly are is underneath that. And underneath that is infinite benevolent potential and possibilities. And we are here to seek and cultivate that. We've been given the gift, most of us, and before we incarnated, we, came, we, we knew everything. You knew everything. You were blissed out of your gourd. And then all of a sudden you said, I'm going to incarnate. I'm going to check out this human thing. You were looking through your brochures. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? Oh, earth, human form. Okay. Oh, duality? What's duality? I'm going to go from singularity into duality. And that was kind of a hard concept to believe if you flip the tables around, because duality means you're going to have a little slight bit of amnesia. You're going to forget who you are, and you're going to think you're who you're not. You're going to think you're limited, or that you're coming from a place of lack, or that grace and beauty and bliss are not part of your divine nature. We came here to re-reveal that in our beingness, and that is what it means to be an Agape affiliate. We take capital C, conscious, capital R, responsibility for our lives to cultivate. We cultivate ever-expanding good. Do we sometimes stub our toes on the way with struggle and strife and issues that blind us sometimes? Yes, we do, but our spiritual practice is what lifts us and so the theme of the month, liberation and letting go, liberation and letting go is the, well, a big chunk of our human experience. We have to let go. We have to let go of struggle, strife. We have to let go of hatred. We have to let go of not liking. If hatred's too strong, then not liking something or someone, which is just a watered down version of hating. We're not, hate does not exist in the divine. And I know that's a hard word, but we want to let go of all of that. We have to let go of the illusion of separation wherever it has embedded itself within your cellular memory and waken to a space of grace. Grace is the energy that helps us move into the law of transmutation. And so I'm inviting you, as the topic would suggest today, to the time grace continuum. When you're in the time space continuum, which we are, if you're in a body right now, you're in the time space continuum, which just means time and space are continually, seemingly expressing themselves. It seems like there was a past and a present and a future. But we know, as Eckhart Tolle would refer to, the power of now, now gets us to leave the present because even the present the present is not the same as the eternal. The eternal is when you get to feel spaciousness and timelessness and wisdom and clarity and beauty and you feel the power, the presence, and the infinite source and supply of all good at your, in your toes, in your bones. It is at your disposal. So we are here to move into the time grace continuum and allow grace to continually lift you. Grace is the most delicious nectar when you're in the human form. Grace is what will take you 
elegantly and brilliantly and joyously into the next level of your human evolution. Now you could go through the time arduous continuum, which means that you're going to fight and resist the call of your soul. And that way when you fight and you resist it, you come up against things where it's like, ah, nah, I don't wanna grow. I don't wanna be blissed out of my board. I just wanna sit here and complain. Now we don't usually choose to sit and complain consciously because if you went over to somebody and you said do you want to go out and just complain today hey why don't we go out we'll get some coffee and we'll just complain up a storm most people don't do that in their conscious mind they do it in their subconscious mind because the erroneous ideas and beliefs that have embedded themselves in your subconscious in your cellular memory act as a filter and so your conscious thoughts pass through the filter they get warped and twisted and the next thing you know, you're sitting there complaining about this and complaining about that. Now, sometimes it's covert. It can be a sneaky, dirty little bird. You could be complaining about something and you don't even know you're doing it. All of a sudden, because I'm justified and I'm right, and that politician, well, I'm right, and I'm going to complain about that, and it's right. No. No, we want to transcend that. There's no complaining in the divine. There's no complaining in a heavenly experience. There is only a proclaiming of the ever-expanding good and the inviting of that, and it is grace. It is grace that allows us to arise into that. And as it says in A Course in Miracles, grace becomes inevitable. It becomes inevitable instantly to those who prepare a table for it. To prepare a table for something means you invite it. You invite it into your life to prepare a table. I mean, think about it. When you prepare a table, if you're going to have some friends over, you're going to make that good meal maybe a little bit better than the one you make for yourself on a regular basis. You're going to put the flowers. You're going to put the tablecloth. You're going to prepare a space. We want to prepare a space for grace. When you prepare a space for grace, it is inevitable and it is instant, and it will lift you, but then you have to listen. You have to listen to it call and follow its steps but sometimes the ego again that dirty little bird sometimes it has a temper tantrum and I remember years ago I was working with a couple and um, we were sitting there and we had set the ground rules the ground rules were that were that uh, and always are that we will be reverent and respectful we will ne never make anybody wrong or bad we will always listen from the heart to, from the other person, no judgment, and always and only speaking of how it feels to you, not what they've done to you, but just how you feel about something. We have laid the ground rules for a very effective, a very compassionate, a very loving exchange. But I tell you, every once in a while, if you've ever had this happen to you where a button gets pushed and all of a sudden, rah, this monster just comes out from your cellular memory, and the character you were playing in this human adventure, all of a sudden it's like like the Hulk, or you turn into something big and green and get very angry. And we were in one of those situations, and it reminded me, because I was looking at them, and they were starting to argue about stuff, and they slipped right into, you did this and you did that, and that's why I feel bad. Exactly what the ground rules were saying that we don't do. This is not only something for couples, but couples, they represent what anything, whether it's a couple that's your friend, whether it's a couple that's the person in the grocery store, whether it's the couple, you know, whether it's the relationship that's the relationship you're not actually in, but you see, because it's the politician, or it's the person you saw on the news, or whatever it is. All relationships are to be cultivated and brought into a healthy place, and so in that grace, we have to take dominion over our lives. We have to take capital our responsibility. We have to do the inner work on a regular basis and set the intentions and allow ourselves to heal the parts within us. And in the Bhagavad Gita, it gives us a nice formula. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says God's grace works in three steps. It works in humbleness, inquisitiveness, and being of service. To be of service. Humbleness is a key ingredient to grace. You gotta be humble. And I know humble and humiliation, those kind of words, they come from the root. Humiliation comes from the root of humble. But humble means to be soft. 
It means I don't have to be right about it. It means I'm available to a higher wisdom, a higher call. So if there's anywhere you need to be right about something, I'm right that you did this, which is why I feel bad, you're not humble. You gotta get humble. Humility is one of the best things. Not being humiliated, but having humility within your beingness that can allow you to be open to the, to the still small voice of compassion. Compassion, and that's where we had to go with this couple I was working with. We had to go. I had to. We had to incite a rule. I had a, a buzzer, and any time they would go into that place, we'd have to hit the buzzer. Ah! Stop! Hold on! Stop! We gotta. We gotta begin again. You violated the rule and went into blame and shame. Blame and shame does not get you anywhere. Blame and shame is not the same as an observation. This is what's going on. And blaming, we blame whether we blame the economy or we blame so-and-so or we blame the politician or we blame. We have to come back to the beginning. We have to follow what it says in those three steps of becoming humble, humble, humble. And we have to be inquisitive. Inquisitive means show me what I need to be, what I need to hold, what I need to evolve into to grow into the bliss that is seeking to emerge. There is one thing that is inevitable. It is inevitable that you will experience your bliss, not on a from time to time basis, not on a false positive basis, because we've all seen that out there, where we have a false positive. Ooh, I got the good parking space. I'm so happy. Ooh, so-and-so called me. I'm so happy. And it's predicated on something from time and space space, not from time and grace, making me happy. I've been heard. Now we want to go even deeper. We want to know, first of all, God knows every move you've ever made. God knows every thought you've ever thought. God knows everything that's going on in every space, in every place throughout. That is why we know God is omniscient, omnipresent, and omniactive. God is everywhere. I know a lot of us are paranoid about Big Brother and no social media and smart TVs are watching us. They're watching us. Oh my goodness! Got to make sure I keep my pants up when I'm on the on the on the internet. Got to make sure this and that, and whatever. Well, the universe knows exactly. Your soul knows you better than you know yourself, and we want to rise in to that and allow ourselves to steep and step into a greater expression where we become inquisitive. We want to ask. We want to say, use phrases like, show me what it's like to be prosperous. Show me what it's like to know that God is my infinite source and my supply. Show me what it's like to have every single relationship in my life sacred and brilliant and beautiful. Show me what it's like to be compassionate with everything and everyone all the time. That is your divine nature. Your divine nature is to be compassionate and loving all the time. And then... When you have been allowing yourself to be humble, when you've been allowing yourself to inquire, you will find that you will step into being of service. Being of service is what you will end up doing as you evolve. Now sometimes we're of service and then we get triggered. I've worked with a lot of people over the years, working at Agape. I've had so many, worked with so many volunteers and we love our volunteers. But every once in a while, you get a volunteer who gets upset about something. And that's okay. We're not making them bad or wrong. We hold them in a field, even in the best situation, even in the best circumstances, somebody might feel unappreciated or unheard or unseen. And so we want to hold people in that space. We want to hold people in the space of grace. We want to invite them into the time of grace continuum. And as we were talking about, I was kind of joking last week um, when we were in Sedona we were having a conversation and David and um, I said you know what I might I might do my sermon on the art of shutting up uh, because sometimes you gotta just shut up you gotta shut up and not say things and what I mean about that is Sometimes your ego, the button gets pushed and you're about to say something you're going to regret and you just need to be quiet. You need to be still. And as I was working with the, those clients, that couple, that was the case where it's like, you're doing this to stop the freight train from leaving your mouth. If you can just stop.
stop it and say, okay, I'm going to be still with the hurt. That which you did, that in this moment feels like you're hurting me, I just have to be with that hurt, get humble, and inquire what it is that I need to be liberated. This is using grace to liberate yourself and be free. Just like the theme of our month is liberation and letting go. Our key is to allow grace. Grace serves a purpose. When you are in the human realm, the law of transmutation operates through grace. The law of transmutation takes your hurt, takes your erroneous perceptions, it takes your pain, struggle, strife, and it transmutes and alchemizes it through grace in benevolent and beautiful ways. Now, a lot of us have gotten used to growing and healing and expanding through experience. I do something, I yield a bad result, and then I say, I'm not going to do that again. Or maybe, and that would be actually putting salt into the wound, if I say, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Well, I went out with somebody and they were awful. Not them. That is not growth. That is not healing. That is um, denial, and that is resistance. Now, if I go out with somebody and I have a bad experience, and then I leave from that, I'm like, well, that wasn't so great. I want to transform, transmute that. So what you do is you get retroactive. You go back in time because we know there truly is no past, present, or future journal that we bring into time and space through grace, the time-grace continuum, and we want to make sure that we activate that. We go back in our reflection and we slather the energy. We slather the energy from the past with what it would take. What do I need? What, would have, what are the eternal qualities? What are the eternal energies? What's seeking to evolve in me so that I can be a greater and grander expression of good? To be, as we say, at Agape, at Soul Center, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. That is the, in the Agape mission statement, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. How do you be a beneficial presence on the planet? You don't be a beneficial presence on the planet, uh, pardon the expression, half-ass. You gotta really rise into a greater and grander experience of it. Full-ass. Pardon my expression. I don't know where this is coming from. This was not planned. But we gotta rise into full-ass and grasp, grasp your divine nature. Full throttle. Full throttle. I think it's because a few weeks ago, the last month at, a, at Agape, I did a reading and it was called The Badass of Something Something and it stuck. But anyway, we're going to move on. We're going to move in. We're going to get fully into our human evolution, which means I'm not settling for mediocrity. I want to see what's the greatest and grandest, using inquisitiveness, as the Bhagavad Gita would say. We want to move into that humble space. We want to move in, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, the dirty bird is going to raise its voice and go, you're being taken advantage of. You're letting people walk all over you. Now, if you do it incorrectly where you let yourself be passive, there is a way where you can let people walk over you, walk all over you, and that is if you leave God out of the equation. When you allow your inquisitiveness, when you allow your humbleness to serve you and serve through you, you will activate something that will allow you to transcend people walking all over you. If you've ever experienced being a doormat, then you want to transcend that, transmute it, we allow ourselves to rise into a greater and grander experience of, of how grace can lift us into something more. We know that grace is something that we activate, and we want to be unusual. I'm going to ask you to get out of the usual and let yourself be unusual. You don't want to be usual. You want to be unusual. You want to be unpredictable. You want to get out into a space of grace. Grace will lift you into the unusual. It'll lift you into the unknown. It'll lift you into something. We gotta become comfortable in the unknown. We get this is the, the trap that we get in. We get comfortable in the known, and then we allow it to carry us into mediocrity. We gotta get unusual. We gotta get out of the box. That's what it means to get out of the box. And so grace is the way, grace is the space. And then eventually, you transcend the law of transmutation, you transcend grace, and you move into bliss. 
Bliss is when you're in the world, but not of the world. But I'll tell you, the minute you say, all right, spirit, all right, soul, I'm doing this. I'm in. I'm going full ass. I'm going to do this in this life, in this body right now, in joyous, benevolent, and beautiful ways. When you do that, something happens. Grace activates itself. God loves. God is interactive. The universal presence is interactive. And that divine inertia that's been pulling you, it loves when you say yes. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to go full ass. I can't believe I keep saying that. <laughs> okay. You're doing it. Um, so we're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And we're going to say yes to grace. We're going to say yes to growing in benevolent and beautiful ways and take capital R responsibility for our lives, which means... We're going to do the three steps becoming humble, which means in order to become humble, we reflect at the end of the day and we become very intentional. But remembering, if you've been following on the morning prayer calls, I'm often referring to, actually, we go into the activation of the law of creation. We use the law of transmutation. We use grace to heal and to expand. And then we call forward the law of creation. And creation, there's that energy that comes down from the soul and it makes its way there. That's how it flows. This is when how the eternal comes into time and space. There's a pathway that it flows. And so we're following that and we're allowing it to have its way through us so that we can transcend into a greater and grander vision of who we are. So it is in that inquisitiveness where we allow ourselves to go beyond Go beyond, become unusual, become and go into the unknown and allow yourself to move out of your safety zone and all the way being mindful and compassionate to yourself that you allow yourself to know once you've activated that grace that it's going to meet you every step of the way. And whether you take baby steps or whether you take quantum leap steps, either way, because I've done both, I love the quantum leap. The quantum leap is amazing, but it is. It's like shape-shifting. In those movies where you see the shape-shifter and it's like, and they just turn it, well, not into the Hulk, but into a different form. That's what it feels like in your bones and in your beingness. It starts to shape-shift you. And then we become aware that not only are we shape-shifting and transforming us, but we're transforming the world. We're transforming, moving out from our energy field into the collective, into society. And as we were talking about in our political forum, um, uh, what was the name of our forum we had on Friday? Transcending, Transcending the, political divide. the political divide. Thank you. <laughs> Transcending the political divide, which is what we were talking about on Friday. And we weren't bringing politics into spirituality. We were bringing spirituality into politics because there's no place that God is not. And one of the things we want to make sure is where are we praying from? Where are we choosing from? A vote is a choice. Where am I voting from? And what am I holding while I'm voting? I'm not voting for this or that or whatever. I'm not voting, we shouldn't be, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, from our trauma body, from our... We are holding a space because politicians represent, they are a body of energy, and they represent and hold the collective consciousness for the area they're in. So whether it's the mayor or the governor or the city council person or the president, whatever it is, they respond to the collective consciousness and you're part of the collective consciousness. So what are we holding? We want to hold a particular frequency as it is stated in the Declaration of Independence that we are all entitled to the pursuit, the inalienable rights for the pursuit of happiness in every way, shape, and form. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. But we're going to go ahead. We want to hold that which we are voting for. And your job isn't even done after the election. Your job is to keep holding for the collective field. Whether it's the field of your own beingness, the field of you and someone else, the field of you and your family, the field of you and your tribe, the field of you and society. And that's the one. So all of them mirror each other. They weave back and forth in this reflective holographic universe. So we don't let politics inform us. We inform politics. We don't allow things to inform us. We inform it. 
What are we holding? We are not at the mercy of the temporal world. The temporal world is at the mercy of us. Your world is at the mercy of your proclaiming and declaring, which means that we heal so that we may reveal and hold to the perfect blueprint because the perfect blueprint in those energy fields, and as we got into the societal one, the perfect blueprint is a world where there is no racism, classism, genderism, there is no poverty, there is nobody against anyone ever anywhere. So we must hold that. That's got to be more important than getting sucked in by some rhetoric that's going on. And remember that every politician or every person, whether it's your boss, whether it's the person, the newscaster, they are responding to the collective consciousness that waves into their field. So we want to participate in that which requires us to be humble, inquisitive, and activate these things, which is what we're going to do right now. And of course, all of that will allow you to be of service. And being of service means you hold things from the highest vibration. That's what being in ser of service is. If I go down and I volunteer, like I have actually many times, at the food banks and you're helping to feed, you have to hold. I don't go down there and hold, oh, I'm feeding you, you homeless person that has nothing. Here's your handout. I'm holding it in a vibration of, hey, I'm helping you and I'm calling from you and I'm inviting from you to step into your magnificence that you may l have the most glorious life experience ever as I hand you your food with love in my heart. So we don't hold people. We got to make sure we hold people in the right vibration. We have to hold them in the right way and see their magnificence and see their success. And again, you're going to want to do most of this covertly behind the scenes in real time. This is where you get humble. You do it in the stillness, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to move into the prayer field. I'm going to invite you to join me as we tune and turn within. And our intention, our prayer request right now is to move into a humble state of divine right knowing, a humble state of wisdom, a humble state that allows us to be malleable and grateful that something wonderful is taking place right here in my world, in the world. We are not allowing time and space to affect us. We are allowing time and grace. Grace lifting us into a higher dimension of goodness than ever before. It is what that we may rise into a greater and grander vision and version of our lives, that we say yes to more good than ever before, and that we remember the truth that God Almighty, the omnipresence, omnipotence, omniamorous nectar and deliciousness, the omniscient wisdom that is illuminating every star, knows exactly where it is, knows exactly the voltage that is emitting from each star in every galaxy, and knows exactly with precision exactly where every granule of sand on every beach, it knows how moist that granule of sand is as a wave crashes upon the shore. It knows the exact amount of water. It knows the precise moment that the flower is going to bloom and stretch its petals out and bathe in photosynthesis in the sun, all connected in every way, shape, and form. We are one with this. We are one with that magnificence. We are one with this magnificent multi-dimensional singularity that is guiding, directing, uplifting, and connecting us every moment of every day. We connect to it through our soul. We connect to it through our humble inquisitiveness and our activation. We call it forward and we remember the truth of who we are. Divine emanations of the Most High, born from the very light, the very heart, the very love of God. And we say yes. We say yes to knowing the truth that will set us free about the relationship, about the situation, about my career, about what I'm going to have for breakfast or dinner. We say yes to providence in every way, shape, and form. And so I'm grateful to know that each of us is coded, loaded, wired, wired. We have the genetic code in our DNA to be perfect and whole and brilliant. It already exists, it never goes anywhere. And we say yes to knowing what that's like. Show me what it's like 
have radiant health. Show me what it's like to know God is my source and my supply. Show me what it's like to have sacred, holy relationships. We choose to know that right now, and we know that it is God's good pleasure to bring forward the kingdom of heaven, to reveal it to, through, and as your beingness, immediately, immaculately, benevolently, and brilliantly, for we use free will and free choice at this particular time to allow it to be. And we must be in divine right receivership. We move from the usual time and space to the unusual of the infinite magnificence. We allow ourselves to go into divine receptivity. We are good at receiving our good. We are good at being prosperous. There is no difficulty in the divine. It is easy. Show me. I am humble. I am available. I say yes. For that is the primordial frequency of the divine. We say yes. We claim it to be. And I'm going to ask you to join me at this particular point in our prayer. Those on our prayer list, we have people in our prayer list right now that are having answered prayers. We, we give a shout out and we hold right where Holly and Michael are. God is, good is, wellness is, joy is. We say yes to loving up on them. We hold everybody that's in our soul circles. We hold everybody that's in our groups. We hold everybody in our congregation and beyond, family members and friends in the holy light of radiant wellness. I ask you to join me. Join me in holding this light as we hold the light and we hold the highest, greatest, grandest vision and version individually and collectively. And as we hold into this, we know that Soul Center is emerging, emerging into our new space, our new facility that meets us in a place of grace. We allow it all to be. We claim it so. We allow it to be so. We anchor it and ground it so by saying, and so I let it be, and so it is. Amen. 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 Ashe. Aho. Mahalo. Shalom. Hotep. And hallelujah. Ground it, ground it, ground it, ground it. Oof. Feel it down to your earth star. Marinate for a moment. Ah, all right. All right. I can't believe I still used that word. But uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to invite back Bashira and Brian and Jesse. Oh, oh, sorry. Before I do that, a little bird just whispered in my ear. It's time for our <laughs> offering. <laughs> time to go ahead where you need the, the sign. Or the sign comes up now. Um, I'm going to invite you to join me in this time of offering. Offering. Remembering that we are... A 501c3, so any tithe, any donation you make to our community is tax deductible and it helps for us to thrive. So we're so grateful for all of you who have been tithing, those of you who have been picking up a little bit of slack for anybody who had a momentary glitch in your prosperity. And we are holding everyone as we rise. You can text the word gives, it says right here, to area code 669 342 2157. You can also go to soulcenteroc.com and you can just scroll down on the home page to that orange button and hit donate now. All of this is safe and secure. All of this is going to get in our building, to get in our classrooms, to get in everything we need to provide you with everything you need to nurture your soul. We're truly grateful. You can also find our uh, land address, our snail mail, and you can mail in checks we love that as well. Always, you know, it's fun to open an envelope and find a check in there. So please go ahead and however it feels good to you. And if you want to set up a recurring account, we appreciate that too. It looks good on our books to show a steady income. So if you want to auto tie, you can set it up on the texting. You can set it up on our give on the donate button. We appreciate that. And with no further ado, we uh, have Bashira and the boys, Brian and Jesse. And we're going to let them thrill you. Yes. I am going to share an original song entitled God Knows Who You Are. Feel free to sing along if you know some of those words. <laughs>
or go to the soulcenteroc.com website and donate there. For those of you who have and continue, we're so truly grateful. We're going to take this time as I'm going to invite you to join me. We extend our heart and our prayers through our hands. We hold them up and we say thank you. We move into a field of gratitude, so grateful to know that something wonderful has taken place, is taking place, and only takes place in the life and the love of God. We open to that, remembering the truth of our divine nature, that we are sourced and we are supplied by infinite benevolent good always. We are grateful for. We are grateful for that which comes through all the funding that is allowing us to pay our overhead, pay for our programs, pay for our expansion. We're just grateful for this and so much more. And we know that in tithing, that which we give out does not belong to us. We are simply circulating the energy of the divine that is called money. And we are allowing it to circulate back through us in benevolent, brilliant, and beautiful ways, minimally. And we get more, and we circulate more, and we get more. This is the very nature of infinite supply. This is the nature of tithing. We give thanks for this. We claim it so. We bless it so. And so it is. Amen. We're getting ready for our peace song to close out our service. And so I'm going to invite the boys and Bashir to come back. And I'm going to invite you, if you want to grab the little ones, bring them into the room. If you want to grab somebody that's in the other room and have them come in, join for our, our peace song. We're getting ready.
joy, prosperity, wellness, goodness in every way, shape, and form. We invite it, we evoke it, we allow it to be, we claim it so, we allow it to be so, and so it is.